okay dear students uh the objective of today's class is to motivate you guys and as you guys have potential and these are the last days i hope you are working hard so to give you confidence and there is one sensitive area of your course which is mtqs section b ot cases okay and i'm sure you guys know about this that in the section b there are three questions and each question contains five mcqs five mcqs type questions and in these five mcq if you do in one mcq if you do one thing wrong like true false true false you have four options in one mcq true false true false true false true false and if you do one wrong so you will get complete zero in that mcq out of two marks right so mtq is comparatively dangerous than the other sections because a slight mistake can cost you complete com you you will lose all marks you like complete two marks not 10 marks right so each and every question you must you need to check thoroughly now i'm sure you guys are you guys working hard in these days especially you guys are doing mock exam you are you guys are revising your summaries you are doing practice on your practice platform acc practice platform i'm sure i'm sure you are doing practice platform and you are staying away from negative people i always say to stay away from negative people because just think you have taken all the classes which previous students also took and you can you know the results you know the results so you have followed everything like you have done all you have taken the classes you have attended the revision days you have sent your scripts for marking of ratio analysis you are doing mock exam you are doing revision you are doing full time studies what what else is left so now it's very easy to clear the paper just send this message to your mind don't don't think negative i sometimes say this thing whenever a student i have seen many doctors like that those doctors who do doctors first first they do mbbs now what what parents do like if you are in the second year of mbbs parents started start calling their son or daughter as doctor 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 dash doctor dash doctor doctor this doctor this why they do this they do this to convey to transfer the confidence in the kid that yes you you will be a doctor so now i would i would advise all of you i would advise all of you please close the camera i told you many time i would advise all of you to write your name as f7 cleared keep your name uh, reported this on your home screen that you have cleared f7 your name f7 cleared and give your give this message to your give this message to your see some one one student is commenting my father now calls me acc sahab <laughs> yes so just give this message to your mind or one more thing i would say treat yourself as a winner okay because you have done everything these and this is the age of technology you know you have all the materials everything is available even on youtube you have seen many lectures you have all the exam techniques everything so now don't worry about it don't think negative especially on this last week think treat yourself as a winner this is the this is the best message this is the main message which i can which i can convey you right treat yourself as a winner so now we are doing some new questions obviously these questions are not in your kaplan exam kit some new questions so that that's why uh, you will have us you will have some different taste so our first question is dear students our first question is jaffers company prepares financial statement for the year ended 31st december x8 wait the financial statement are expected to be authorized for issue on 15th march x9 so this question as you can see this word authorized for issue or approved you can see it's connected to ias 10 little bit connected to ias 10 events after the reporting period events after the reporting period okay and you know in ias 10 we have two types of events adjusting events and non adjusting events adjusting and non adjusting okay adjusting events are those events which gives us evidence that 
that that thing that event that the chances of that event was available at the reporting date right okay and non adjusting event there is no further evidence so for adjusting events for adjusting events we need to adjust the last year financial statement and for non adjusting event we just need to make a disclosure in the last year financial statement just need to make a disclosure in the last year financial statement okay now let's start and when i teach when i teach is 10 even my is 10 is available on youtube as well when i teach is 10 i say there are for in your f7 or f3 level normally examiner test famous examples examiner test famous famous example and same they have done in this question see health and safety fine health and safety fine it's connected to is 37 as well fines and penalties fines and penalties a health and safety investigation of an accident which occurred which occurred see this that means accident happened in x8 accident happened in 2000 x8 accident happened in 2000 x8 last year was concluded in january 2009 resulting in 1.5 million for jaffers company a provision of 1 million had been recognized in jaffers company's financial statement for the year ended 31st december x8 now i would say this is adjusting event this is adjusting event why because what was the reason of this fine the reason of this fine was accident and this accident happened last year so the reason already existed the reason of this outflow existed at last year that means at the reporting date we have the evidence that we have to pay we have to pay so yes you will you will record complete 1.5 million provision last year you will record complete 1.5 million provision last year and this is adjusting event adjusting event even even we discuss even we discuss this thing in our normal class normal class as well this example we discuss in our normal class as as well that we supplied some faulty goods we supplied some faulty goods to customer last year and because of eating those faulty defected goods customer got sick and hospitalized and then customer filed case on us so yes this is also adjusting event because we sold the bad goods last year right so yes this first one is adjusting event the second one customer see is trading so it's about bad debts it's about bad debts the most famous example the most famous example of adjusting event the most famous example of adjusting event let me tell you one very special thing the day the day we do credit sale the day we do credit sale we get data in our books the day we do credit sales we get a data in our books and the moment data is created in our books the same at the same second we get, we have a credit risk the moment you see data in your book you record data in your book the next moment you have you you are aware of the credit risk that means there is a chance that means there is a chance of bad debt that means there is a chance of bad debt there is a chance of bad debt right so yes if there is a debtor at the year end if there is a outstanding debtor at the year end definitely definitely you have a chance of credit risk you have a chance of bad debt okay now you now use your brain they will give you a separate story but still you have your brain notice was received on 10th january x9 no matter no matter note notice was received on 10th january x9 that a customer owing 1 one, one point owing 1 or 2 million 1.2 million at 31st december x8 see this is very important line that means receivable at the year end debtor is debtor was there at year end debtor was there at year end and when you have a debtor when you have a outstanding debtor at the year end when you have outstanding debtor at the year end that means you have a credit risk at the year end and when there is a credit risk there is a chance of bad debt yes so it's an adjusting event had ceased trading it is unlikely that the debt will be recovered again this is adjusting event again this is adjusting event why this is adjusting event because 
we have evidence at the year end we have evidence we have credit risk at the year end that the that the customer will run away whenever there is a debtor there is a credit risk whenever we have a debtor we have a credit risk so yes this is also adjusting event and i i repeat if you see my notes or if you read the book these two examples are directly written in the books in the section of adjusting event now the third one acquisition this is takeover acquisition of a competitor without reading this without reading this i can tell you takeovers and mergers takeovers and mergers after the year end they are normally finalized they are normally finalized on the last date they are normally signed and finalized on the last date last date so in this case this is non adjusting event this is normally non adjusting event now please students the acquisition of compet of competitor was finalized on 10th of january x9 being the date jeffers company obtained control over the competitor negotiations in respect of the acquisition commenced in may x8 no issue no issue we have started negotiation but it but it was finalized it was finalized it was materialized on january x9 so now wait this is just this is non adjusting event these takeovers mergers or issue of shares just after the year end these all are non adjusting event these all are non adjusting events okay so we have out of these three the first two are adjusting and the third one is non adjusting event third one is non adjusting event okay now without wasting a single second without wasting my 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 dear students my beautiful students without wasting a sing, single second let's let's move to our questions then we'll read this last paragraph the first one the first one come on you can see on the screen giving you 30 seconds of one minute you have one minute come on tell me it's what's the answer of question number 1 what's the answer of question number 1 very good majority students are giving correct answers very good so nice of you events after the reporting date are deemed to be all events from the date financial statements are authorized for issue until the date of annual no 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 it's you know the scope of isn it's from the reporting date to the date financial statements are authorized for issue approved so there there is no there is no such thing written as annual meeting or that board meet that uh agm annual meeting means agm annual general meeting nothing like that so first one is total false first one is total totally false number 2 non adjusting event do not need to reflect it in any any part no we have to write in the disclosure section so we have to write in notes to the accounts we have to write in notes to the accounts we have to write in notes to the accounts so my dear student one and two both are false d is the answer d is the answer right so next one which of the three events i just taught you which occurred in jan would be classified as adjusting the one and two are adjusting so answer is a answer is a we have already discussed we have already discussed we have already discussed right now the third one let's let's read this paragraph please in addition to this in addition to this there is an outstanding court case at 31st december x8 i am reading this paragraph students please be alert in addition to this there is an outstanding court case at 31st december x8 relating to faulty goods supplied by jeffers company legal advice state that there is a small chance that they will have to pay out 6 million small chance but the most yes this is the word most likely outcome is 5 million i hope you remember i always teach like this you know in in the chapter of is 37 there are three conditions for provision present obligation probable outflow and reliable estimate in the third section of reliable estimate we teach two techniques we teach two techniques of statistic statistics techniques the first one is eva 
expected value analysis eva and my dear respected student the second technique the second technique is the second technique is most likely outcome right so eva we use when when there is a large number of transaction like warranty warranty claims and all but in for most likely outcome normally we use most likely outcome in case of single transaction in case of single transaction like court case so this question see this question is about court case so it's a single transaction it's a single transaction so we use, we will use most likely outcome okay so most likely outcome is how much 5 million so keep this thing in mind we have this is a relevant number either way jafar company will have to pay legal fees of 0.2 million yes this is what unavoidable legal cost you win or lose remember my dialogues you win or lose you have to pay lawyers fees you win or lose you have to pay lawyer fees so this is a mandatory this is a must thing 0.2 million you have to account for now read this word all payments means this 0.2 and this 5 this 0.2 all means both payments are expected to be made on 31st december x9 so my my beautiful students listen right now we are at 31st december x8 right now we are at 31st december x8 and we have to pay the cash flow after one year so hope you remember these famous dialogues all obligations which are payable one year or after all obligations which are payable one year or after need to be discounted need to be need to be discounted okay so we have 10% interest rate and this is discount factor so very simple we will do 5.2 million multiplied by 0.909 5.2 multiplied by 0.909 will give you 4.72 something. 4.72 something. So this is this is the thing which we have to book as a provision. 4.72 or 4.7, which we need to book as a provision. Okay, right. Now for students, look at here. C. This is the answer. Question number three. Answer is C. Question number three. Answer is C. Okay, now question number four. Now read the last line. Use your brain. Hope you remember contingent asset. There is one one last topic of IS thirty seven, which is contingent asset or possible asset. Remember. So now just think. We provided forty goods to customer. So customer came to us. We provided forty goods to customer. Customer filed a suit against us. So we 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 turned back. we turn back and we file suit against our supplier because our supplier provided us the bad things right so now whatever we we'll claim whatever we we'll claim from our supplier that will be a contingent asset for us whatever we we'll claim for from, from our supplier that will be a contingent asset for us a contingent asset for us okay now read it jaffer companies this line please students Jaffer Company believes that fault lies within the supplier. That means our supplier provided us bad things, and is pursuing a counterclaim. Legal advice states that it is possible, possible only, possible only, possible, but not likely. Likely means probable. Likely means probable. Remember that the action will succeed. Now, just use your brain. It's a it's a contingent asset. it's a contingent asset it's a contingent asset and the chances and the chances to receive this and the chances to receive this contingent asset is only 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 possible chances to receive this contingent asset is only possible so whenever you there is a contingent asset and chances are possible you you don't do anything even no disclosure yes we do disclosure if it is probable we do disclosure in case of contingent asset if it is probable and yes if contingent asset is virtually certain if contingent asset is virtually certain then we book it we make the entry right so now let's move number 
see the question please number 4 at 31st december x8 which of the following represent the correct accounting treatment of the counter claim of the counter claim made by jeffers answer is a nothing is recognized or disclosed right do nothing it's do nothing it's do nothing question number 4 somebody is asking a question legal cost is virtue it's don't call it virtually certain just we have to pay so still this provision and liability is the same thing and examiner is asking the total amount of payable examiner is asking about total amount of payable that's why we combined it now this is a general question this is a general question hope you remember it in is 10 in ias 10 we generally teach this thing in ias 10 we generally teach this thing that normally for adjusting event there must be an evidence normally for adjusting events there must be an evidence at the year end for non adjusting event we don't need any evidence but but there is an event which is called going concern if after the year end if after the year end company came to know that company is no longer a going concern so in that case whether you have evidence or not at the year end still this is adjusting event and you have to you have to prepare complete financial statement on break up basis okay so in short going concern is always an adjusting event going concern is always an adjusting event and you have to prepare financial statement on break up basis because this is a very big event because now company is going to be closed going to be closed okay so read question number 5 and pick pick the right answer question number 5 and pick the right answer please now next it's b yes in february x9 a major fire broke out jeffers company's property and warehouse all property burned jeffers company has no insurance and now the management of the company believes it is unable to continue trading so it means everything is going to be stopped everything is going to be stopped and okay this fire occurred suddenly there is no evidence of this fire at the year end but still as this is so much pervasive that it will it will clean your company it will clean your it will stop all your operation so yes it's an event of going concern so now the financial statement can no longer be prepared on going yes you have you have to prepare financial statement on break up basis all other options are wrong see no adjustment should be made this is totally wrong c no disclosure is required this even yes we need to write the disclosure as well d is totally irrelevant the e the financial statement should continue to be prepared no 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 they have openly said that company is unable to continue trading that means everything is going to be finished everything your main trading options are trading operations are going to be stopped so yes company is no longer a going concern answer is b answer is b now next question next question please so we have a question lenity company lenity company okay please uh, before this question starts let me tell you one example one short example easy example students look at here for example i have to do i have to construct a building i have to construct a building and 
I only need, let us say, 50 kg cement. Just for example, I only need 50 kg cement or 50 packets of cement. But by mistake, I ordered 60. By mistake, I ordered 60. But in the end, I used only 50. So 10 are left. 10 cement packets are left. So obviously, I can return it. I can return it or I can use it on any other project. So now on this project, on this project, I have only used 50 packets. So only 50 packets cost will be capitalized on this pack in, in this project. Okay. Whatever, whatever raw materials, cement, or these type of things you are going to use for that project that will only count for capitalization. All the excess things, you know, we can return it or we can use it on any other side. So that will not be capitalized on this project. Okay, this is a very common sense thing. Very, very common thing. So let's start. During the year ended, 31st December X8, Lenity Company built an extension. Lenity Company built an extension to its head office. The cost associated with the construction of the head office extension are as follows. Now we are constructing. This is this is what we call self-constructed asset. So for self-constructed asset, IS 16 says you can capitalize all directly attributable cost. Only you cannot capitalize abnormal. Abnormal cost is cannot be capitalized. Okay. All normal directly attributable cost are capitalized. So yes. The land acquisition, yes, this will be capitalized. Fees for environmental certification and building permits, yes. Without this permit, you cannot start construction. Without this permit, you cannot start construction. Architect and engineer fees, yes, we call it professional fees. Without architect, you can't, you can't do construction. Now, construction, material and labor, see the bracket, including unused materials. So this 6.6 .6 million, including some unused, unused, which I just told you, I told you a story. So we need to remove, we need to remove the unused material from this. Read it. At 30th September X8, the date when the head office extension became available for use, the cost of unused material on site 2.5 million. So what does it mean? Out of this 6.6, 0.5 is unused, 0.5 is unused. So only 6.1, only my dear students, respected students, only 6.1 million, only 6.1 million is used in this project. So only 6.1 million will be capitalized. Now wait, hope you remember a very one class standard IS 23. Hope you remember this IS 23 boring cost, boring cost. Hope you remember boring cost. Remember that if you are doing construction of a qualifying asset, if you are do, if you have taken loan, if you have taken loan to construct a qualifying asset, a qualifying asset, and you have taken loan for that qualifying asset, then yes, you can you can capitalize the interest. You can capitalize. Capitalize means you can record interest as an asset. And this, uh, this interest cost will be the part of that asset cost, will be the part of that asset cost, okay? Hope you remember IS-23, we have studied in the class as well. Now read it. At that date, the total borrowing cost incurred on a loan, which was used to specifically, specifically, see the word specifically finance, the head office extension amounted to 0.8 million. Yes, this will also be capitalized. This will also be capitalized because this is specific fundings. This is specific borrowings, specific, not general borrowings. Okay. Now, now listen. So we have 10 plus 0.5 plus one. Then we have the 6.1. So, and then finally we have this 0.8. Now, can anybody tell me what's the total 10 plus 0.5 plus one plus 6.1 plus 0.8? I think it's 18.4. Somebody told me, am I right? The total is 18.4. The total is 18.4. Okay. Just take 30 seconds. Take 30 seconds, the students. Okay, 
So the question number one, see the question number one, please. For the year ended 31st December X8, how much should be capitalized in respect of the construction of the extension of the head office building? The answer is A. Okay. Now question number two. It's a general question, giving you 30 seconds. Come on, take your decision, take your decision. Be confident, be confident and take your decision, please. Now, yes, majority have given the correct answer. Lenity company incurred further expansion of the head office extension after it had been completed. Okay. Yes, further cost can be capitalized. This is called further measurement, subsequent measurement. Hope you remember. So, which of the following would qualify as a property insurance premium? No. Insurance is, listen, insurance is a routine expenditure. We, we pay insurance premium every year. So, whatever whatever thing is recurring. Whatever is a recurring thing is a revenue expenditure. Okay, like rent, electricity bill, telephone bill, cleaning, these all are recurring. Okay, one more thing. Without insurance, without paying insurance, we can we can bring our premises in useful condition. Now leave the B. C, marketing cost. Marketing cost is always an expense. Marketing cost, advertising is always an expense. Maintenance is always an expense. Now what is left? Installation. Yes, installation cost can be capitalized. Basic I is 16. Installation cost can be capitalized. Installation cost can be capitalized. Now, question number three. Question number three. Giving you again one minute. Again, it's a generalized question. Question number three. You have to pick the false one. My dear student, you have to pick the false one, please. Pick up, pick up the false. Okay, let me talk. Let me let me discuss. You have to pick the false one. And yes, we have we are on revaluation model. In subsequent year, the depreciation will be based on revalued amount of the head office. Yes, yes, this is true. This is true. Once you revalue it, once you revalue your premises, once you revalue your premises, then yes, you depreciate. Further depreciation will be done on the basis of revalued amount. Further depreciation will be done on the basis of revalued amount, on the basis of revalued amount, okay? This is true, but we have to pick the false. Any gains or on the head office building is recognized in OCI, yes. And any loss in PNL, yes. Listen, first time upward revaluation goes in OCI and first time downward re revaluation goes in PNL. So apparently this is correct. Apparently this is correct. This is also true. Now. Leave the C part first, do D. First, do D. The residual value and the useful life of the head office must be reviewed each year. Yes, this is true. This is the instruction of IS 16. Hope you remember. The residual value and useful life is judgment, is estimated. And estimation depends on availability of information. Estimation depends on availability of information. So every year you get new information. So every year you get new information. So this is the instruction of IS 16 to revise, to revise, to revise your useful life and residual value every year to check whether your to check whether your life and residual value is revised or not. So yes, this is true. This is true. Now read C. Each component part of the head office being re, re, no, 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 no. This is false. No, I told you. 
if you apply revaluation model on one class of asset on one asset complete class of asset will be will will have the same model if you apply revaluation model look at here if you applied revaluation model on one one asset you need to apply that revaluation model on complete class of asset and hope you remember i talk, i gave you this lecture that all properties are one class of asset all vans are one class of asset cars are one class of asset so just think when all properties are one class of asset so if you revalue one property you have to revalue all properties so yes the complete property is revalued in one go complete property is revalued in one go not through components okay so this statement is false c is false statement c is false statement please now my dear student question number 4 this is this is this is cgu hope you remember the cgu thing hope you remember the cgu thing let me do something for you so this is carrying value this is impairment okay and this is the final thing so your total c carrying value of cgu lenity company also acquired 100% subsidiary subsidiary is an ideal example of cgu on 1st of january x8 the carrying amount of the assets of scully in the consolidated financial statement of lenity group at 31st december x8 immediately before an employment review were as follows were as follows listen so you have total carrying value of cgu is 11.8 carrying value of cgu is 11.8 and what is the recoverable amount the recoverable amount of the cgu is 9.6 is 9.6 so first of all calculate the total impairment total impairment is how much total impairment is how much tell me 11.8 minus 9.6 is 2.2 yes they have ready made given you they have ready made given you total impairment is 2.2 total impairment my respected students is 2.2 okay now how to spread this is the total impairment of the total cgu how to spread this impairment number 1 is obvious impairment there is no there is no indication of any obvious asset there is no hint of any obvious impairment so leave it now second step is complete goodwill complete goodwill will be written off complete goodwill will be written off so out of this 2.2 out of this 2.2 you're going to subtract 1.4 so you will have a remaining impairment of 0.8 you will have a remaining remaining impairment of 0.8 okay now this remaining impairment this remaining impairment will be distributed between remaining assets that falls under the scope of is 36 so never never ever never ever give anything to current assets current assets are already at their recoverable amount nothing will you will give to current assets or cash nothing you will give to current assets or cash so obviously now these two now these two players now these two player will bear will bear the remaining impairment brand name and property plant and equipment so how you going to do it through their respective carrying values so 2 plus 6 2 plus 6 is 8 2 plus 6 is 8 so what will be the fraction for brand 2 divided by 8 just check 2 is the carrying value of brand and what is the total carrying value of these two it's 8 multiply by you will do 0.8 how much is this 2 divided by 8 into 0.8 it will be 0.2 here and yes 0.6 will come here so how much the value of brand how much is the value of brand after how much is the value of brand after this impairment 2 minus 0.2 1.8 and this is 5.4 so i have solved the complete question i have solved the complete question in front of you but the examiner is not not asking you to solve complete examiner is not asking you to solve complete students please they are just asking you the value of brand they are just asking you to the value of brand the value of brand 
Yes, it's 1.8. So let me move the screen. Assuming come Scully company represents a cash generating unit. When what is the carrying amount of the brand at 31st December X8? It's 1.8. So answer is D. It's 1.8 million. So your answer is D. Okay. Point number five, question number five, please do it. Question number five, it's easy, not difficult. It's very easy. Which of the following statements is correct? Is are at the end of each reporting period and entity should assess if there is any indication that assets have been paid. True, true, true. Yes. Remember, I told you we never do, we never book impairment directly. We never book impairment directly. First, we see. First, we see. Is there any indication? First, we check. Is there any indication? If yes. If yes, there is an indication, we do impairment test. If no indication, no impairment test. So this is a mandatory thing. This is a mandatory thing that we need to check whether there is impairment hint or not. Whether is there any impairment indication or not. If yes, if yes, there is an hint or indication, we have to do impairment review or impairment testing. So this statement is totally correct. This statement is fair. Now, number two, annual impairment reviews are required on Intel. Yes. You remember three assets, three assets, three assets for which if there is no hint, if there is no hint is given, still we need to, still we need to uh, do impairment testing at least annually. One is intangible asset with indefinite useful life. Second is goodwill, purchase goodwill, remember? And third is intangible asset not yet available for use. So this point number two is out of, the, out of that three things, right? So both statements are correct, both one and two. C answer. C is the answer. Now let's move to one uh, OT case of IFRS 9. IFRS 9. See, this is this one, Diaz company. Diaz company. This is related to IFRS 9. Can you see? It's connected to IS, IFRS 9 and IAS 2. IFRS 9 and IAS 2. Okay. Now, you have at the year end the valuation of your inventory. The valuation of your inventory is 8.6, 8.6 million. Okay. Right now, the valuation of inventory is 8.6. Your receivables are, your receivables are 6.2 and you have a 5% loan notes. Obviously it's a liability, loan notes on the credit side. So it's a liability, okay? And this 5% is always a coupon rate. The rate which is adjacent, the rate which is adjacent to the loan note is always the coupon, always the coupon, always the coupon, always the coupon rate, okay? Now, the first thing, this basic thing is related to F3 level. F3 level, this is a F3 level thing. Even we teach this in F3, but it's still sometimes it's dodgy for students. So let's do, because the basic things are also coming. The inventory count, the inventory count was completed on, at, on 31st December X8, but two issues, we need to resolve two issues, two issues, don't sleep, don't sleep, please, have been noted. First product, 
first the first issue product with a sales value product with a sales value means selling price means selling price of 0.6 million had been incorrectly excluded from the count so now what we have to do we have to include it we have to include it because they have excluded it now wait 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 this 0.6 million is the selling price let me write scp hope you remember this thing scp percentage and dollars so this 0.6 is the selling price this 0.6 is the selling price now tell me we are charging markup or margin we are charging markup or margin we are charging markup on margin it's markup it's markup right so in markup cost is always 100 profit is 50 so it's 150 okay selling price is 150 selling price is 150 can you see the screen can you see the complete screen so now this 0.6 now this 0.6 is equivalent to 150 0.6 is equivalent to 150 so how we'll calculate the cost 0.6 divided by 150 into 100 0.6 divided by 150 into 100 0.6 Divide by 150 into 100, this will give you 0.4. This will give you a cost of 0.4. Now, wait, 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 wait. The cost is 0.4. Now, use your brain. We all, we, are, we all are sure for one thing. We all are perfectly 100% sure for one thing, that this, this transaction has been ex excluded. This transaction has been excluded from the inventory count inventory count this transaction has been excluded from the inventory count so now we need to include something but you know in is2 we need we always include inventory we always value in inventory at lower 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 of cost or selling price lower of cost or selling price so now out of this 0.4 and 0.6 out of this 0.4 and 0.6 out of this 0.4 and 0.6 what which one is lower 0.4 is lower 0.4 is lower 0.4 is lower right so we'll add 0.4 wait this 8.6 was the original amount we'll add 0.4 see the first first transaction is done first issue has been resolved because they have excluded it they have excluded it so now we need to include they have excluded it so we now we need to include now we need to include now we need to include okay some students are asking that they are they don't know markup and margin see this is a very basic thing this is very basic thing if you if somebody has issues like I have one lecture in Hindi Urdu language of markup and margin, take it from me. But markup and margin, you must know from your basics, markup is profit percentage on cost and margin is profit percentage on sales. But again, I would say, if somebody doesn't know, then they, he or she should learn it. She sh should take the class properly, okay? Because because of this markup and margin, you, can, you will get complete zero in your MCQ and OT case. Be careful. Each and every mark, mark is important. Now, the second issue, the second issue, second items costing 0 .5, 0 0.2 million, which had been included. See, this 0.2 is already included. 0.2 is already included, but there is a problem. In the count word damage, damage, damage means, damage means something is bad. Something is bad. Something is bad. Now, this is the indication that NRV has gone down and could only be sold for 50% of the normal selling price. 50% of not cost, 50% of normal selling price. So first of all, we need to calculate selling price. Wait, let me write SCP, SCP, dollar and percentage. Wait, now you have 0.2 million as a cost. This 0.2 is your cost. And you know, we have a markup. We have a markup in this question. So in markup cost is always 100. Profit is 50. So this will be 150. So can anybody tell me the selling price? 0.2 divided by 100 multiplied by 150 will give you 0.3. So 0.3 is your normal selling price. 0.3 is your normal selling price. 0.3 is normal selling price. Look at here, what they are saying. And let me read again. See, 
they are saying they are saying could only be sold for 50% of the normal selling price now wait what is the cost what is the cost cost is 0.2 and now what is the nrv they are saying nrv means net realizable value now what is the realistic selling price 50% of the normal selling price 50% of the normal selling price can anybody tell me what is the normal selling price normal selling price is 0.3 0.3 is the normal selling price now may apply 50% on it so half of 0.3 is 0.15 now you tell me now you tell me now you tell me inventory they have already included at cost they have already included this inventory on cost okay but is2 says is2 says inventory should be recorded at lower of cost and rv ias2 says inventory should be recorded at lower of cost and rv so which number is lower which number is lower my 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 good students which number is lower nrv is lower so we need to bring this 0.2 to 0.15 we need to bring this 0.2 to 0.15 so we have to subtract we have to subtract 0.05 from this so we'll get the correct inventory number so we'll get the correct inventory number so how much is this 8.6 plus 0.4 minus 0.05 8.6 plus 0.4 minus 0.05 how much is this 8.95 is your correct answer now for this second transaction i can explain in one more way when i teach f3 level because i teach all levels i teach f3 f7 sbr all level i teach baby kids infants you know infants infants baby i teach babies as well so when i teach infants i do it in more more spoon feeding way like 8.6 plus 0.4 8.6 plus 0.4 first you first you subtract complete point 2 first you remove complete point 2 and then you add point 15 in the room first you delete point 2 from the room complete point 2 from the room and then you add point 15 in the room because the item is still the closing stock the item is still the closing stock which is unsold stock so you can do it in this way as well the first subtract point 2 and then add point 15 in that room so automatically you will get the same effect but again i would say now you guys are no more kids you have done complete course of f7 now complete course even you have done the revision days so now your knowledge must be more than an f3 students okay just give me 30 seconds hello ha karo karo jaldi karo take your time take your time take your time take your time i'm just giving you one minute to to think over it think over it i'm i'm not doing anything not doing anything you just read this part both issues one is excluded one is included one is excluded one is included Hello. Did you understand? Please hit on the chat box if you understood the part. Hit the chat box, please. Write write on the chat box, please. All of you. Write in the chat box, please. All of you. you know this type of question normally comes in a levels as well a levels exams as well okay now move now let me check the mcq for this first of all 
क्वेश्चन नंबर टू वॉट इज दैरेक्ट कैरिंग अमाउंट ऑफ इन्वेंटोरी वैल्यूशन टू बी रिकोगनाइज इन This is answer is eight point nine five. A is the answer. A is the answer. A is the answer. Right. Now the next one is. This is generalized question. Let's see your mind. In a quest point number one. In accordance with IS thirty two financial instrument presentation, which of the items in the trial balance would be classified as a financial instrument? So financial instrument. Hope you remember financial instrument. it's a contract which which gives rise to financial asset for one entity and financial liability or equity instrument for another entity now wait wait in point number 8 closing never no inventory is not a financial asset remember inventory is not a financial asset because inventory is not a cash or it's not a right to receive cash so no 5% loan notes only no we have one we have one receivable as well wait a minute wait a minute okay so only loan notes only loan notes are not only loan notes are not financial instrument receivable yes receivable and loan notes both both are financial instrument why receivable is a financial asset yes and because of receivable there is a financial liability in the other books and loan notes yes loan notes give rise to financial asset at one entity and financial liability at another entity so in this trial balance see the trial balance in this trial balance this trade receivable and this loan notes both are financial instrument both very basic question both are financial instrument so answer is c question number 1 answer is c now again a very generalized question a very generalized question read please check it out please check it out this is very general question hope you can hope you can do it yes cash is also financial instrument cash but there is there was no cash written in the trial balance question number 3 please in an attempt to improve reported profit the directors of dias company wants to change the valuation method from in to fifo to average cost yes this is change in accounting policy change in accounting policy and yes change in accounting policy is always adjusted retrospectively so the change will no this is change in accounting policy the financial no change in accounting policies are adjusted retrospectively so answer is d answer is d answer is d now hope you remember a topic which we which we call factoring remember this is our company this is our customer and these are factors hope you remember when we do credit sales when we do credit sales to our customers whenever we do credit sales to our customers there is a debtor in our books and now factor we factor normally pays us 90% or 95% amount factor normally pays us 90% or 95% amount so obviously you need to make the entry bank debit whenever you receive funds from factors when ever you receive funds from factor you have to debit bank now there are two major issues two two there are two types of this factoring first is insured bad debts and the second is uninsured bad debts one is insured bad debts and the second is uninsured bad debts okay if the bad debts are insured if the bad debts that means factor said yes bad debts on my side so that means now you have transferred now you have transferred the risk and reward now you have transferred the risk and reward of your receivable that means in reality in reality you have sold your receivables in reality you have sold your receivables in reality you have sold your receivables right okay so in that case what you do you debit bank you credit your receivable 
and if there is an if there is a difference slight difference you book it in pnl if there is a slight difference you book in the pnl okay so this is the treatment of insured this is the treatment of insured okay but what happens when when there is uninsured when the bad debts are uninsured that means we still bear the risk and reward of receivables we still bear the risk and reward of receivable so in that case you debit bank and you credit loan from factor okay if you have done the question highwood highwood of final account high in highwood question i think this this is the last adjustment so this is going to be uninsured this is for uninsured dear student and the second one is insured second one is insured insured right now let's read let's read the facts and figures of this question let's read the facts and figures of this question listen the the ask company entered into a factoring agreement into a factoring agreement with fan company on 31st december x8 in accordance with the arrangement the ask company sold just this is a word sold but we need to check the facts as well we need to see the facts and figures as well sold trade receivable with a carrying amount of 6.2 million to fiat finite company for 6 million okay so that means we received this cash we received this 6 million we received physical cash of 6 million from the factor now the major thing now, now the major thing is it's insured or uninsured read it under the terms of the factoring agreement after 6 months finite company will return will return any unpaid receivable to dias company for collection see that means this is uninsured bad debts this is uninsured bad debts that means they will wait only 6 months the factor will wait only 6 months after 6 months they will they will throw you back they will throw you back the receivable and now we will be responsible so this this means this deal is pure uninsured so for uninsured deals we have to make entry bank debit and loan credit for uninsured factoring deals we have to make entry bank debit and loan credit and yes whenever you book a loan in your books whenever you book a loan in your books so that means you need to book finance cost with the period of time you need to book finance cost or interest expense with the period of time okay see this is written finite finite company will also charge the as company 5% 5% of 5% of any uncollected balances at the end of each month at the end of each month at the end of each month right at the end of each month right so now read the now this is uninsured let's read let's read which of the following statement regarding the factoring arrangement is not true is not true see this what they are saying it's not true can you see that means you have to skip the true ones it is also written in the examiner report students don't see the c not they have written not capital sometimes we we do these mistake these stupid mistakes to be very honest that you have to pick the not true you know everything but you don't read the requirement so 6 million received should be recorded this is true this is true yes as this is uninsured deal so it's true now wait first read this a total of 5% monthly fee should be expense yes 5% monthly fee yes this is also true this is this is finance cost this is finance cost the receivable will remain as an asset this is also true yes because this is uninsured deal 
this is uninsured deal so receivable receivable will still will still be part of our books because we bear the risk of receivables we bear the risk of receivable so we we are not going to de recognize the receivable we are not going to de recognize the receivable so a c and d are true now read the b point point 2 million should be expense no this is false point c wait if this was insured wait if this was insured deal if this was insured deal what should be the entry bank debit 6 receivable credit point 6.2 and yes we'll book point 2 in pnl we'll book point 2 in pnl this this would be the entry if this is the if this deal was insured if this deal was related to insured bad debts if this deal was related to insured 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 bad debts if this deal was related to insured bad debts so answer is b did you understand my dear my dear students now number 5 Number five is the thing which we practice a lot in the class. See, it's five percent loan notes. Look at this five percent loan note thing. Look at this five percent loan note thing. The the value is nine nine million. Okay. Now, hope you remember this this facts. The five percent loan note were issued were issued on issued for nine million. See, this is the actual amount of cash we received. hope you remember the amortized cost accounting use your brain use your brain use your brain amortized cost accounting we start amortized cost with the net cash we receive we start amortized cost table with the net cash we receive so keep in mind first of all we receive 9 million and see the date it's 1st july x8 like on the mid of the year our year end is 31st december x8 our year end accounting period ends on 31st december x8 so we took loan in the mid of the year now this information is very relevant because now we have to apportion the finance cost we need to apportion the finance cost hope you remember dias company incurred issue cost of 0.5 million associated with this which have been expense within finance cost it should be listen this issue cost must be yes this issue cost become part of finance cost but with respect to time this issue cost becomes part of finance cost but with respect to time so what we do initially we do initially subtract this 0.5 million from 9 we subtract 0.5 from 9 okay the loan note interest is payable at 30th june means after every one year we start we took loan on 1st july we took loan on 1st july x8 so after one year 30th june x8 we will be x9 we will be paying the first one and the loan is to be repaid at a premium okay giving them effective very important line effective interest rate yes we book interest expense we book interest expense using effective interest rate we book interest expense using effective interest rate giving you 30 seconds or one minute can you calculate the finance cost for this year can you calculate very good some students have done correct can you calculate the finance cost for this this year okay let me let me teach you listen we received the face value we received 9 million and no discounts okay we received 9 million cash now 
on the same day we gave 0.5 to the lawyer less issue cost issue cost wait it's 0.5 so how much net cash we receive initially we receive 8.5 hope you remember these columns this is amortized cost brought forward so you have 8.5 and this is interest expense now wait they are in respect of the five how much should be expense expense within the ask company's profit and loss for the year ended 31st december x8 so yes you need to book only 6 months so how need you need to calculate 8.5 multiply by 8% times 6 upon 12 how much is this 8.5 okay 0.34 million yes this is your expense this d is your answer d is your answer 0.34 only they are asking about the interest expense okay dear students now i would like to in the end i would like to say that uh, be very careful with ifrs 15 my lectures are updated because ifrs 15 has changed the construction accounting of ifrs 15 has changed but i have seen some whatsapp messages some students are using old kits don't use it use the new kit which is relevant from september 2022 onwards right for for ifrs 15 you need to use new kit and it's it's advisable because in the consolidation area there is p2a and a2p sales p2a and a2p sales there is a little change as well so low so so please students look at here you must you must use new exam kit for f7 and new study tax especially for ifrs 15 because you will be otherwise you will be confused otherwise my my dear students you will be confused be careful for that okay one more thing i would say that on is i have uh, uh, yesterday i made a video i made a video but that's in hindi urdu language that now acca uk has given you a special facility those who have who have appeared in last attempt september 2022 skills module for any non variant paper like f5 f8 f7 f9 these are non variant paper leave it f6 for these paper now they will give you a personalized feedback acca has given you personalized feedback it's it's not generic feedback one thing is generic feedback like exam exam report one thing is generic feedback like exam report or read the mind of the marker yes exam report you should read it's also advisable but now what i am saying it's very important personalized feedback feedback for your own for your own paper whether you have passed or failed you have passed or failed go to my acca examination link and you will see your performance dashboard you will see your performance dashboard okay performance dashboard and in that you will get a detailed feedback about your time management that how did you manage your time how did you perform good in which syllabus area how did you perform in first 60 marks how did you perform in last 40 marks so this is very very advisable you will come to know your mistakes and this is a great thing acca did for for you guys okay like the best use of data best use of data so don't forget to read that thing before the exam also read the exam report as well and just for your motivation i am saying that you have done everything those who studied a full time course revision days so just for your motivation i say that although it, the global pass rate of is of f7 paper is 50% plus which is already good but normally when acca sends us the pass paper my pass rate is 80% plus so 80% plus is a very good pass rate it this is a motivation for you guys that you guys are in safe hands so just think about pass pass and pass don't think about fail if you think about fail you will you will have you will continue with negative thoughts okay so go do what is advice do what is advice be confident read the summaries read the exam report read your own feedback of last attempt if somebody has failed then he must 
review his or her his or her own feedback okay right so i'll send you the uh, slides as well of this uh, best of luck for your exams and take care allah hafiz